to go through and debunk these two Trinity moments by Steven Anderson, and you're going to see how he leaves out some scripture that kind of make a problem for this whole system. And the thing that cracks me up is they'll say, we're going to prove the Trinity from the Bible, even though the word Trinity is not in the Bible. We're still going to prove it. And they, they refuse to use the word Godhead, which is a biblical term. You know, it's crazy. It's, 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 it's Catholic. That's what it comes down to. The Trinity, its origins is in paganism and, and Catholicism, which is just repackaged paganism. So let's get right into it and just show how he's, he kind of leaves out some scriptures that make a problem for this whole system. So let's get right into it. Hey everybody, Pastor Steven Anderson here from Faithful Word Baptist Church in Tempe, Arizona. And this is the first in a series of short videos called Trinity Moments. And each of these videos will use one scripture to prove the Trinity or to debunk the false doctrine called modalism. So we're going to use the scriptures to, to prove the Trinity, even though the word Trinity or divine essence or, or God the Son or God the Holy Ghost or one in unity. None of these appear in the Bible, but we're going to use the word Trinity, to, or we're going to use scripture to prove it anyway. Okay? Right. Makes perfect sense. Modalism is a damnable heresy that attacks the very nature of who God is, who Jesus Christ is, and in the end, it actually attacks the very divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ, his very deity. It's a wicked false doctrine, and... It's mainly been limited to oneness Pentecostalism, but just recently it's starting to creep in to Baptist circles as well. So these videos are really important to nail down what we believe about the Trinity and that the Trinity is what the Bible clearly teaches. So the Trinity is what the Bible teaches. Okay, where's the word Trinity in the Bible? And, same thing, and, and while you're looking for that, where is the word divine essence? Where is there's one unity? Where is God the Son? The proper term is Son of God, not God the Son. Where is God the Holy Ghost? You know, where is you have to add the stuff. Where is any of the stuff in the Bible? The proper term is Godhead, not three persons. God is a, if you read Hebrews chapter one, God is only referred to as one person. You know, the person. That simple. So you have to add three persons. And people will say, well, you believe in the rapture. The, rap the word rapture is not in the Bible. Okay, but I can prove the rapture from the scriptures alone. I don't have to add stuff to the Bible to prove the rapture. For the Trinity, to explain the Trinity, you have to add divine essence. You have to add their, their one in unity, one in purpose. their three persons. They have to add all the stuff to prove the Trinity. And another thing that, that's worth noting is that, is that the rapture is a title for an event. The Trinity is actually a title for God. So you're giving like just the name like the name Yahweh. The word the name Yahweh is not a, a name for God, but yet Christians call God Yahweh, which is blasphemous. And the word Trinity is a title for God, which is blasphemous. I mean, nowhere is God called a Trinity, and it's a girl's name too, by the way. Worth noting that. So it, it's ridiculous. So you had to add stuff to the Bible. So we're going to prove the Trinity from the Bible, even though the word Trinity is not in the Bible. Sure, I mean. It's Roman Catholicism what it comes down to. The Catholic Church has to add to Scripture to prove their heretical doctrines. But let's continue. Now, this is going to be a long series because there is just a lot of Scripture to prove the Trinity from the Bible. And not only that, we're going to go through the proof text that modalists would twist to try to tr teach their perverted doctrine. So I'm going to start on this video with John chapter 5, verse 31. The Bible reads, if I bear witness of myself, my witness is not true. There is another that beareth witness of me, and I know that the witness which he witnesseth of me is true. Verse 37, and the Father himself which hath sent me hath borne witness of me. You've neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his shape. So right there, Jesus Christ. Okay, and again, that proves the biblical Godhead, but here's something he forgot to mentioned. Here's something he left out. John chapter 8 verse 18. Uh, I'll start at verse 17 actually. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. Verse 18. I am the one that beareth witness of myself and the father that sent me beareth witness of me. So wait, Jesus doesn't bear witness of himself? Uh, yes he does. And then verse 19. Uh, then he Sorry, then they said unto him, Where is thy father? Jesus answered, You neither know me nor my father. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. So if you've known Jesus, you've known the Father. So they're one. And you jump down to uh, jump down to verse 21. Then Jesus said again to them, I go my way, and you shall seek me. You shall die in your sins. Or, sorry, die in your sins. Whither I go, you cannot come. Then if you go down to verse 24, 
And this is again Jesus speaking. I said therefore unto you that you shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sins. Um, that's God the Father's title. In the context of this passage, talking about God the Father. If you believe not that I am he, God the Father. That's the context of the passage. If you jump down, here's a good one that makes a big problem for this whole thing. Uh, jump down to verse 58. Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. God the Father's title. Read, read back in Exodus chapter 3. I am that I am. That's, what, that's God's title. Back in the book of Exodus. So Jesus just gave himself God. And of course the Jews, that they tried to stone him because, in verse 59, then they took up stones to, to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. So Jesus just said before Abraham was, I am. He gave himself God the Father's title, and the Jews tried to stone him. So Jesus and the Father are not one? Sure. So it's funny, he conveniently, he conveniently leaves that verse out. Interesting. And he's, he's got this one right here, you know. Again, just, just more of this Trinity nonsense. Hey everybody, Pastor Steven Anderson here from Faithful Word Baptist Church in Tempe, Arizona with another Trinity moment proving that the Trinity is biblical. Here's what the Bible says in John chapter 5, verse 30. I can of mine own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I seek not mine own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. Now there are a couple things in this verse. Okay, that proves one thing. It, it does prove the biblical Godhead. It does not prove the Trinity. What it proves is that there's a hierarchy in the Godhead. You know, John 14, 28, my father's greater than I. Well, again, compare that to, I'll show you the verse, uh, say, uh, 1 Corinthians 11, verse 3. There's a hierarchy. He's not saying they're two separate persons. That, that's what he's arguing. The hierarchy, it proves a hierarchy in the Godhead. For, uh, say, 1 Corinthians 11, 3. But I was, oh, sorry, what I would have you know, at the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. There's a hierarchy. So when Jesus says, you know, I'm doing the will of my Father, he's not saying that because there are two persons, he's saying that because of the hierarchy in the Godhead. So, again, it's funny how he just, he just is twisting the scriptures so much. Verse, first of all, Jesus said, I can of mine own self do nothing. So that shows that God the Father is not himself, okay? God the no, it proves a hierarchy in the Godhead. It doesn't prove they're two separate persons. It just proves that, again, uh, 1 Corinthians 11, 3, the head of Christ is God. There is a hierarchy. It doesn't say they're two separate persons. It doesn't prove that. Straw, Father is it's a straw man argument. The one who sent him. And then at the end it says, I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which had sent me. Well, here's the thing. If Jesus were God the Father, then he would be seeking his own will because his will would be identical to that of God the Father. If they're the same person, but yet he said, "Oh, they are one person." But what? Here's how the Godhead works. There is separation in the Godhead because what he what he is saying it's a false dichotomy. You have either your Trinity or your modalist and oneness. Um, neither one of them is right. There is there is a separation in the Godhead. Obviously, we see that at the baptism of Jesus in Matthew chapter three, verse I think it's sixteen to seventeen. Jesus is on earth, the Father is in heaven, talking to Jesus, and the Holy Ghost comes down. There is separation in the Godhead. You see all the verses. Like in Revelation, where Jesus takes the book out of the Father's hand. Or you have verses where, like in Acts chapter 2 and Acts chapter, I believe it's Acts chapter 7, where Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God the Father. So we do see a separation there. But what he's doing here is, is he's setting up the straw man argument and saying, yeah, see, it proves the Trinity. There, there, it proves there's, there's different persons in the Godhead. It doesn't prove that. It just proves there's separation in the Godhead. Your body and your soul and spirit can separate. But the difference with us and God is that if my soul were to leave my body, I would just drop down dead, which is for God, his soul can leave the body and they can still be on, like manage on their own. That's the difference. So, again, it doesn't prove the Trinity. It just proves the biblical Godhead. But he's twisting it to make it prove the Trinity. It says very clearly here, I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. Why? Because the Father and the Son are two different persons within the Godhead. Chapter and verse on that? Where does it say they're two separate persons? Ridiculous. Okay. The Father has a will, and the Son has a will. And Jesus did not seek his own will, but he sought instead the will of him that sent him. Again, what is that proving? It proves the hierarchy in the Godhead, that there's there's a hierarchy. You know, Again, the head of Christ is God. It doesn't prove the, the pagan trinity. So I wanted just to show those two videos about how the 
just a twisting of scripture that has to be done to prove the Trinity and how they have to add these, these other terms. And some more scripture I forgot to mention that prove, that proves a hierarchy in the Godhead is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 28. You know, this is when Jesus brings the kingdom up to God the Father, again, proving a separation. Um, now, I'll read verse 28. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then also, then, sorry, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him, that God may be all in all. So, so the Son is subject unto the Father. You know, so again, we see a hierarchy. This does not prove that when Jesus was doing the will of the Father, he's not saying they're two persons. It's ridiculous. It's, it's, it's adding to scripture. So don't, don't be deceived by the Trinitarian nonsense. Uh, God bless you. Goodbye.